Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Finding Nemo. The last time we've begun this game and did the first three levels going to school, field trip, and the drop off. And this time we'll be doing a few more levels, starting with Mask Chase, where we will be playing as Marlin for the first time. One of three playable characters, of course, we've been playing as Nemo up until this point, and this is where the game starts to become more of a mixed bag. In a stroke of genius, don't follow the boat. I gotta get that mask. Follow the mask. So this level has a very strong current and a time limit, which the time limit is the silliest thing. If you just rush through, if you just rush through, that time limit will never come close to running out. If you try 100%, though there is not enough time you will keep dying and because the game saves your progress after each death that's I, what I'm assuming they intended you to do now I'm gonna do the enemies one because I want to get at least you know one star per level and we're probably going to run out of time even though we're just doing this one even though what I just said is totally true in which you don't do any of this shit. Though, I will say, if there is a level I don't get a star in, it might be this one, just because it's, you know, not the most fun to do. Like, this level is actually pretty fun to just rush through, as long as you're careful. You have to have some patience, and you have to have plenty of krill. Because otherwise, otherwise, this level's really annoying to 100%. I, it's, I said that wrong. Th this level can be really annoying. If you aren't patient. Because there are a lot of things that can hit you out of nowhere. So we are going to fail this segment. Well, that's not how I intended to fail the segment, but that's how we failed it. But yeah, as you can see, the enemies we killed before are still dead. The game saves all of your progress besides position after death. And that's that's what you should not do. <laughs> But essentially, that makes one of us sending this level more tedious than anything else. Because you you're, you can do it, you just... It might take a minute. It might involve a lot of this. Oh, fun fact, I'm pretty sure the only one who has an actual death in their death animations is Nemo. You know, the kid character who isn't in danger the entire movie. He's stuck in the fish tank. It's Marlon and Dory who are on the actual dangerous journey to reach him. But in the game, Nemo is the only one who actually dies. You saw the death animation last episode. And by the time we get back to it, I'm sure you'll see it again. next section there's gonna be more enemies we need to get like that one and yeah we are gonna want these krill Yeah, the current is really strong in this area. And it makes this a real pain in the butt to do.
Yeah, the current just pushes you right into shit. And this enemy is real annoying, isn't it? This is the bubble you have to use, but it has to be close enough. Also, the game is very weird with how it decides to dock your krill. I have no clue what its criteria is. You know, this is what happens if you run out of time. Marlon looks sad. <laughs> this is what happens if you get eaten by an e eel. Is, is that what, what is that thing? Just, just showcasing my lack of oceanic knowledge. Him and also, how many do we have of these? Okay, we have a lot. <laughs> a lot more than I thought. Pretty sure this is either the last or there's only one more of these sections. No current here, that's nice. I hope I didn't end up missing any, because that's going to really suck. I am trying to sort of speed run this stage. Come on. There we go. Just barely made it. Now, there is one more of these. And we're probably going to spend the most time here, because I want to make sure I got all of the enemies. Well, here there's a bunch of krill. Nice little secret. Credit to the developers for having such a nice secret. Nice pop in there. Really showcasing the power of the Xbox. Pop in and finding you know. I am getting the rings I see, just you know. I'm I'm happy that I didn't get screwed over from that. See, I don't know what made it determine that that exactly is how many... Like, it feels random. Sometimes you lose just a couple. Sometimes you lose, like, all of them. And it seems like totally random which it chooses. And we got two more enemies left. Looking here, getting these rings. Before I die. I hope I at least get one of the damn things. I really don't know if I will. Though. I know. Wait, I thought this was where the Krill Secret was. It's where our three rings I missed are. Like, the thing is, I'm pretty sure Krill respawns. Also, I didn't get hit by him. I just watched the replay on my recorder. I didn't get hit. But the game said I did. One thing I can tell you, this is the last section of this type of gameplay style. And of course that happened. I might cut ahead here. 
Krill, my savior. I think I'll cut back into it. Cut back in here. Uh, yeah. See, I praise this level and it does this shit to me. There are a lot of obstacles you just can't see coming. Man, I'm not getting the enemy one. I might get the rings. pretty sure I missed one so I have to die. Like the thing is, actually now that I think about it, I could just load into my 100% save file to show you. I don't have to get them. Which is why I'm still going to try. And I totally did get all of them and I just got paranoid. I got all of them. I got all of them. I got all of them. That'll be 76 after the next set of three. That was all of them. There would need to be two more sets. I got them all. What a miracle. I'm. I honestly expected my chances of getting all the enemies to be higher. Apparently not. That level took a little too long, but hey, we finished it. Though to be fair, if you go for 100%, some of these levels can take forever. The worst being submarine. My 100% one of submarine, well, I'll tell you about that when we get to submarine. But first, we got this. I guess I'll do this one, because these aren't... These are more... Actually, I probably won't do this one. Yeah, let's see. About that edutainment thing, it's more true than you think. This is literally a matching game. And because, of course, it's played as Dory. And there's a lot of things you have to match. And my memory is horrible, so I'm not going to get this. D do I do this, my beloved audience? Do you really want to see me suffer through this shit? That would have been amazing if I got that. Wait. While I'm doing this, for whatever reason I'm doing this, Yeah, isn't this exciting? Yeah, I have no clue why they decided to put this kind of shit in the game. I don't know whose idea this was. I don't know. Like, they, they, they are a disgrace to Traveler's Tales. And they're good name because this is just not... This isn't them. Like, like, they're better than this. 
And again, you'd think I'd be better than this awful matching I'm doing. Look, no one ever said I was good at matching. We don't have that many left. That's what the first one is. This is going to make it easier for me to remember. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed me uh, just embarrassing myself with how absolutely terrible my memory is. Well, I get to to say that you can play as, you know, the three characters, Nemo, Marlin, Dory, but only in specific stages, of course, dependent on the movie. Sorta. Of. I mean, obviously, there are times where you can only play as Nemo, but through a lot of the levels, you should probably be able to play as any of the characters. Like, right after this one, you would think Marlin and Dory, you should be able to play as both of them from now on, but that's not how it works. It's a little weird. But yeah, we got Catch Dory here. The only thing here is the rings. And I'm, uh, should go without saying I'm not doing that. Now this is one of the most boring levels in the entire game. All you do is catch Dory three times. Yes! Three times! And to be fair, the level layout changes each time, but it is boring. At least the music's decent. And there are a bunch of rings. Since each segment is different, you have to fail this until you get all the rings of a section. In order to get all the rings, which is why, of course, I'm not doing that, because I'm a sane individual. Who doesn't want to do this boring level forever? Yeah, so we have to watch this exact same cutscene three times as well. And yes, I get it, it's from the movie, but there are some things that you don't copy. Some things are best left in the movie. This was like a one minute, two minute scene in the film where the, this happened. I'm doing terrible at this. It is worth noting that those regular bubble rings do give you a slight speed boost. It's not that much, and obviously, you want to go through the ones Dory's giving you. But they do help a little if you're nice and far behind. Like I am. Now, I've never actually died in this stage. There's no enemies, and... I don't know if anything happens if you get far enough way enough from Dory. In other instances like this, something does happen. Yeah, isn't this thrilling? And eventually you will loop around. And then you're not seeing anything new. And you're just swimming through the rings. And of course the obvious comparison is Superman 64. Though I'll give this game credit in one way. The controls are 
far better than Superman's ever were. Like, everyone knows how terrible the controls in Superman 64 are, and it's why everyone hates the ring. I mean, also the fact that it's Superman, why are you swinging through rings? Well, flying through rings in that game. And on top of that, it's boring. And also, there's so much of it. Like, half of Superman 64 is flying through rings. And the controls are horrible. At least in this game, most of the ring swimming is optional. And the controls are far better. Still, I don't like when they require you to do it. Like in this, like this level sucks. This is the first bad level of Finding Nemo. Arguably, Mass Chase is a bad level, but this is the start of the downfall of the game, you could say. Why aren't we doing so much better this time? <laughs> I say as I miss two rings. Appreciate the little reference in the movie there, in that arrow. Yeah, the, the other shame, Traveler's Tales made the Toy Story 2 game, which is way better than this. Like, that game is legitimately great. Yeah, we're, f we're done with that one. Thank the Lord, and we're going to do the bonus of that one. I have a feeling this video is going to go a little long because Minefield is going to take me a minute. I'm going to load into my other save to show you the bonus for Catch Dory. Because why not? Wrong one. <laughs> yup, they get worse. This is an even harder slide puzzle. I think there's one that's even harder than this, and thankfully, that one's a bonus level as well. But yeah, uh, I cut to this to show you a lovely bonus level, and now I will cut away back to the main file. And we're back. Now, what do you think? Another slide puzzle. That's the second one of the game we've already seen. And I think the level after this one is the first one in which we are forced. Forced. To endure them. But we have this stage, which is another blech stage, because most of it is this. Did you enjoy swimming through the rings? Why you're doing it more with hazards this time? Essentially, you could consider Catch Dory the tutorial for this one. And I guess you could say this is more interesting since there's hazards, but it's also more annoying. A lot of these rings are right with the hazards. Now, to be fair, the challenge with this one, you don't have to catch up to Bruce. You just have to not fall so far behind that the game fails you. So, if there's a... Tr I guess we'll call them trap bubble rings. Avoid them. You don't need to get them. Just get the ones that you can, and if one looks like it's going to lead you right into something that's going to kill you, 
Just avoid it. You don't need to get all of them. The level will continue to progress even if you aren't right up his ass. <laughs> The other annoying thing with this one is there, to my knowledge, are, aren't any krill. There's none here. So the entire level's one hit death, which really sucks. And considering this is a kid's game, I will always wonder why they made it so hard. Like, Toy Story 2 was a really easy game. I wish that game was a little harder. And that's also Traveler's Tale, so I don't know what happened here. Now, these are the most annoying sections of this level because there's current. And there's going to be a lot of these that the current's going to push you away from, and you're going to miss because of that. So, now, to be fair, there aren't, these aren't going to be in front of hazards here. So, here you want to get any of them you can and fight the current. Because these sections are going to kill you a few times on your first playthrough. And they might kill me a few times here. We'll see. Like, there's a few you're just gonna miss. You just have to make sure you don't miss too many. Now, there's a few invisible checkpoints, I think. At least I hope there are. I might be remembering incorrectly. Or just being hopeful that they had some good game design here. But there is one, like, bouncing segment, which obviously checkpoints you. And it, it should go without saying most of the voice actors did not return for this game. Some replacements are better than others. Dory's, I think, is actually pretty decent. Bruce's is pretty bad. Marlin's is mediocre. The most... Uh, the 100% thing I'm going to do here is going to be these, because they're not that bad. You just have to know the right way to go. Because... Uh, you bounce on these three times, as the gimmick says, and by the way, there's your death animation. The by the way, I think I already screwed that up. Uh, great performance here, but yeah, this is obviously the easier of the two. I think it's just two in this level. Oh, by the way, that's the multi-bounce thing I told you about screwing me over. The controls are iffy in these sections. Alright, that's that first section done. And you just have to know which ways to go off the bat. Shit, I think I already screwed it up. Yeah, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's the one annoying thing about this. You gotta know which way to go. Because if you go down the wrong way, there's pretty much no way to recover. In, ter in terms of getting 100%, obviously it doesn't matter if you're just trying to beat the stage. Once again, the control screwed me over. Like, that's just going to happen a few times to where the controls are going to cause you to do multiple bounces on one of them when you didn't mean to. Yeah, you just have to know that that's a dead end. Go the other way and you're going to be wondering why you missed some. And I'm pretty sure I also just went the wrong way again. And I'm pretty sure I'm screwed, so... And...
I didn't remember getting that one already. Uh, and that pathing was shit. And that pathing was shit. What? The controls do really screw you over in these sections. And this is one of the... How the hell does it keep happening? Like, this is one of the easier ones because... Like, the angle is good. There aren't a bunch of obtuse angles in this one, which really screw you over in the other ones. They aren't in this one. But it doesn't really matter because you'll still get screwed over by the weird way these control. Yeah, this is a bit of an annoying section, and once again, I know I don't need to do this. And that second bounce, that was completely unintentional. I was facing the right way, I was holding that direction on the analog stick. But the game failed me. Have I told you that I don't like this level? <laughs> there are a few screw ups there. I didn't hit up. I didn't. But the game registered me hitting up. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to explain every time. You're going to see multiple inputs that I don't mean to make. And, screw it, I'm not doing this. I'm sorry to disappoint anyone who is really, really wanting me to. But, I have my ways of showing the bonus levels. Though this will be a great example of how easy and pathetic this game can be when you just rush through shit. All the deaths I just had. I'm going to do this first try. No sweat. That's what not going for anything in this game is usually like. That's why I try and usually go for something, but in these levels, they're, they're, they are an exception. And yet again, we have another current section, which, once again, you have to try to get as many as you can, but the controls are really going to make it hard, and I think we are going to experience our death here. Uh, yep. Bruce randomly turns against us. In the movie, it's because blood went up his nose from a nosebleed door he had. Here, he just does it because he feels like it. Because we weren't close enough and he just gets angry. Thinks we left him. And gets so mad that his fish friends decide to abandon his party. That he wants to chase and murder them. That's our headcanon, folks. Yeah, the current's just not fair in this section. You have no idea when it's going to change. You just have to have muscle memory for it. And we're going to fail. 
This is the level I thought of. It's like, do I really want to let's play this game? Because that means I'm going to have to go through this level. Like, this might be my least favorite level in the game. There's a few that come close. But this might be my least favorite level in the game. Because the thing is with the slide puzzle levels, while that definitely really hurts them, most of them otherwise are really good, and you can just look up the solutions to the slide puzzles. Now, to be fair, you shouldn't have to look up the solutions to the slide puzzles. But you can. You can look up the solutions to those. Whereas this, there's no solution. You just have to know when it will switch from dying multiple times, which is not very good design and it makes this level really shitty. Well, we're doing well. <laughs> See what being quiet gets you? It is worth noting that if you run into those mines, you will die. Whenever this happens, that tells you you got a checkpoint. So we're checkpointing here. Don't have to do that section again. Thank God. That was my fault. That's a ring you just gotta avoid. I mean, to be fair, you can get the rings that look impossible to get, and Trust me, you go for them, you'll feel like they're impossible to get, but you can get them. I've gotten them like in a few freak accidents. The thing is, I have no clue what makes it work. And so there's, it's not worth going for them. think we're near the end of this level. I'm missing a lot here. Well, we were definitely near the end of the section at least, and that's the only thing. Now we have to restart this whole damn segment. I'll probably cut this. I think we're back, so... How close were we to the end of the section? That close. <laughs> and that is the end of Minefield. This is a 40 minute video and that was a 14 minute stage. According to the game at least. Sorry, had to drink some water after that long stage. <laughs> Perfect to do well for playing Find Nemo, right? Now, I, before we end off this video, I want to at least show the bonus stage for Minefield. So, what beautiful stuff do we have? Ah, this one. Yet another Luxo Ball, and I probably could do this one. But it would take like 10 minutes, and I really don't feel like spending 10 minutes on this. Which, by the way... Only 16 rings to get through. You think, ah, that ain't that many. But the place is real big. Real big. And of course, there's these. If you or the ball hit these mines, you die. Now, the good thing is it'll save your ring progress. But this took me 10 minutes to do. It'll take me 10 minutes to do again because once you get down to the last couple, 
it's really hard to find them because of how huge this stage is. It's not one of the worst bonus stages, but it's a bonus stage, so we are skipping it. And with that, that is it for this part of Finding Nemo. Next time, we'll go to this monstrosity. <laughs> it won't take that long, I assure you. I assure you.